today I'm going to show you how to create a use auto save hook uh, in React to automatically save some state to a database. For now, we're going to use local storage um, to update this form. So basically, we have several different forms um, or several different fields that we can update. And we're going to use local storage to update date them. So basically, to show you kind of what that looks like, if I do local storage dot set item, um, and we're going to use the key that we have, and then you have to stringify everything that you're sending into local storage because it only takes strings. So we're going to say my name is uh, what, and then we're going to say Brooks, and go ahead and run that, and refresh this page, and we'll see. Okay, my name is Brooks, so that's perfect keep refreshing it so it will always pull in oops sorry so in a little bit too much there it'll always pull in that first value using this init function so I'm going to go ahead and delete that uh, is it remove item yeah remove item M M and M and I think that's it. And if we refresh, we'll see that it's gone. Okay, perfect. So we want to create a use auto save uh, hook. And so to start, let's just create a new file called use auto save.js. And there we'll um, go ahead and import. Um, well, I'm not sure what we're going to need. We're going to need some stuff from, import, uh, from React. But for now, we can just do export default use auto save. Um, and then that's a function. So we should give it the name of a function and then spell things correctly. That would help. And so basically what we want to do here is we're not totally sure everything we want. With autosaves, we do want some sort of delay. So we're going to set that to be a um, thousand milliseconds. We might want it to be longer in real life, but for the purposes of this, this demo, we're going to want that to be quick enough so that we can see did it work um, or not. The other thing we'll probably need is we'll probably need the data. So we'll probably actually, you know, we want to upload certain data. And the other thing we need is we need the storage ID. So right now we're using local storage to kind of, you know, emulate a database. But um, and, and a real example, you may use, you know, any number of databases. Uh, when I built this the first time, I was using Firebase. So I just passed down a Firebase uh, ID for the doc and updated that way. So that's kind of what our API looks like. So let's save that and then go into back into mnm.js. And we will go ahead and import use auto save from use auto save and we're going to want to call it with um, our data so we're going to pass down state which is which is our data it's the you know state that's holding all of this and we don't actually need to pass in that duration but we do need that storage id and we should be good so we'll be auto saving all of this um, obviously it's not actually going to work nothing should be auto saving yet because we haven't done any work so once we're inside of there we will need to um, basically update this you know every thousand milliseconds when something has changed so the best way to do that is to get a use effect use effect uh, is the hook for you know doing side effects like a timeout or a database update which in this case we'll be doing both so we're probably going to want to reach out for set timeout right set timeout is a way that we can delay some sort of action um, i don't really actually want to put a thousand i want to put in delay so that that's something that someone can change and so after a thousand milliseconds, what are we going to want to do? We're going to do uh, local storage dot set item. We're going to use the storage ID and then JSON dot stringify the data that comes in. So every thousand seconds, we're going to want to do that. And let's see if that's actually enough to get us going. So we're going to do a console log just to see console dot log saving. Um, and then I think we need the delay in here and we probably need the data in here and we actually do need the local storage string. So all of our data will be passed down. Uh, sorry, that's actually what we really want, which means that we don't actually need this dependency array, but we'll just keep it here just in case we want to um, use it more. So let's go ahead and refresh this page and run this. Well, and there we got a lot of saves, so maybe something's not going quite right. Um, and the thing is, with use effect, this is now getting rendered every single time we change the data, which isn't great. So we actually want to be able to clear this set timeout. Um, we can do so by returning some function. This is gonna, this is gonna somehow do a clean. And the cleanup we want is we want to get the timeout ID. And here we're going to do clear timeout timeout ID, and then 
did not like clear. Let's see what's going on. There we go. And so if I do this, we'll see saving only comes once, which is great. So there is a bit of a problem though. This is actually really just a debounce. This is just a, a thousand millisecond debounce. An auto save, what we want there is actually, we want it every thousand milliseconds to update the database, even if we're still typing and just continuously be updating. And then also importantly, not update if there's no actual data coming in. So this is a pretty good start, but we definitely have some work to do and we'll continue that in the next video.